Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, September 22, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? The first thing we have on the docket is our whisper number. We talked about whisper numbers last night. 373.75 373.75 was one of those quote-unquote whisper numbers. It was posted on Twitter this morning. The market basically finished on it at the end of the day, but did have a bounce away from it this morning. They didn't do it in the manner in which I like, therefore I didn't get a personal trade out of it. However, 373.75 is important. We're going to get more into that We're going to get more into the significance of what the next number is. And yes, there's a next number down south, but there's a lot of stuff going on that we have to unpack. The other line you see on the screen is 377.91. That was the gap that was filled yesterday. And they made a late day attempt to get up there, run a test of that number, maybe recapture it if they were really strong. They couldn't even get to it and then they declined into the close. We don't need that gap number no more. And by the way, why don't we really need it anymore? Because if they start to go back up, what are they going to do? They're going to try and get into this big breakdown candle, and then you have a big fat round number of 380. So we'd be working with other stuff from an intraday perspective in terms of that area. That's why we don't need that gap anymore. Write that down. Put it on a sticky. You can use it later. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. What's the elephant? The tinfoil hat event that I keep mentioning that takes place tonight. It's a little after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What is it, you might ask? It's very simple. It's not a secret. It's a known known. It's the fall equinox. Now, some might say, well, what the hell does that have to do with the market? That sounds like a bunch of baloney, malarkey, hocus pocus. That's why I call it a tinfoil hat event. Here's what I want you to do. Go take my word for it. Do yourself a favor. Go to the charts. Go back to a date book. Go find the past equinoxes. Locate the day. Go back to the charts and see how many out of the last, let's just say, 10 or 15 for argument's sake, how many represented a turn on the tape. How many represented a really important turn on the tape? Now, I'm not saying a turn has to happen tomorrow. What I'm saying is, this is an awareness that we have to have. Let me explain how we use this information a little bit deeper. First, it's an awareness. That's fair enough. But now, let's just say the market flushed down to a lower level today. Let's just say it flushed down to 371, give or take. Let's just say that's the case, and I'm going to show you why that's important a little bit later, but let's say after doing that, it put in a sign and or signal of a trend change. And let's say I looked around the horn and I said, hey, wait a minute, we're on an on-time type of situation. You see how it starts to become a full stack of information, notwithstanding the tinfoil hat event. The tinfoil hat event with a full stack, has added benefit. We have the awareness. We may have a heightened state of awareness if we have a full stack event. I don't see this as a full stack event. They're at an important number, but that was an important number for today. In fact, while they finished above it, they came back to run a test very late in the day. Maybe we get a turn overnight. Here's what to watch out for. Now, I'm making this video shortly after the closing bell. You may be listening to this or watching this video long after this happens. Watch a little after 9 o'clock. See if you have a movement in the futures market, if you have access to the futures. A little bit after 9, do they trade into something and reverse? Do they start moving a little after 9? We don't know exactly what's going to happen. All I can tell you is I've seen this before. This isn't my first rodeo. Here's what I do know. I have the awareness. That doesn't mean anything significant is going to happen, but if there's other stuff stacked up, hint, hint, write this down. That's when we use this information with an added sense of 
or heightened sense of alertness. Okay, now on to the next thing. What's the next number down? Well, I already gave it away. It's 371, but let's find out why. Well, we can see here it's an important pivot low, but is it the most important pivot low on this page? Well, on this page, I would say no. I would say this is a more important pivot low from the 17th of June at 362.17. That was our shenanigans tail candle, if you remember. So what do we have? We have a lot of stuff. We have shenanigan tail candles. We have tinfoil hat events. We've got thieves in the night. We have rescue operations. We got all kinds of stuff. That's why we need a pad full of sticky notes. All right, back to the 371. So here's the situation. If it's not the most important number on this page, then it must come from a different page. What about the weekly chart? What's the significance of that number from the weekly chart? Is that the low? No, that's the lower low. That's the 362 or the shenanigans tail low. So again, on this page, it doesn't really stand out as being that significant. So why am I harping on that number? I'm gonna show you why. There's a monthly chart. How many people even ever look at a monthly chart? People have short-termism. They don't look at the big picture enough. Let me explain this, and I know there's a line here. I don't wanna take it out. It's too good in there. It's been there too long. I don't wanna mess it up. So I'll explain what this is. So this is a breakup candle, but here's the significance. They made a low the prior month, the month of June. Then they tried to reverse the June month low. They tried to reverse the entire candle. They came close. They finished at the highs, near the highs. And then the next month, which is last month, which is August, they went higher, but they weren't able to close above either of the last two months. So that becomes bearish, but trying to recapture it is bullish. You still have a breakup candle. Guess what? They can run a test of the low, they can reverse back up, and that breakup candle can be a breakup candle, a two-step pullback, for example, and I just made that term up, and then they can have another leg higher. Don't rule that out. That's certainly possible if they hold that breakup candle low. Where's that breakup candle low? 371.04, that's where the 371 comes from. If they close the month, not a week, not a day, not an hour, not a minute. If they close the month below 371.04, that's going to be a negative thing going forward. It's something else to add to the bear case in addition to the trend and all that stuff. And when we talk about trend, you have to realize what time frame you're looking at. Is the trend securely down on the monthly chart? And I would say, no, not really. The shorter term trend is down, yes. They're below home base, which is the 20 period moving average on the monthly chart, but they're still above and have yet to even touch the 50 month moving average, technically from a long term basis, that makes the monthly trend still in a long-term uptrend. Is that going to change? Can that change? All that stuff is a yes. It's a matter of when and how and all those things. But right now, we look at what's in front of us and we take it at face value and we say, hey, the thing that's nearest us, below current price, the nearest important thing, write that down, put it on a sticky note. What's the nearest closest important thing below or above the same thing applies above current price that's what we're looking for you look around the horn at all the charts until you find the next important thing above or below current price for me below is 371.04 don't be surprised to see them paying a visit overnight don't be surprised to see them paying a visit tomorrow morning. 371.04 is an important spot. Now, check this out. Write this down too. Let's say they open below. Let's say they have a big gap down and they open below 371.04. And by the way, before I go any further, you do realize folks that are in the Lazy Swing Trader product, we still have half a position short with options taking this ride. The second half of the position is up 200%. Here's what's on the board, the current open positions. 
There's your position at the bottom. There's your closing gain as of today, the open portion of the position up 197.92%. How you doing? How do I not mention that? Let's get back to the thing. So let's say they gap below 371.04. That's a significantly negative sign. They can try and recapture it after the open. Sometimes what they'll do when they do this kind of setup is they'll rally back to run a test at 371. They'll pop above, can't stay there for very long, can't close candles above, and then they fall away. So you have to watch for the gap below 371. Here's the trap. The trap is... Traders short below 371, but guess what's right below it? A fat round number of 370 where they can catch the tape and run a rescue operation and then recapture 371 thereafter. What I'm telling you is it's a monthly number spending time below it, not only intraday, but intra week and intra month is okay, but closing below it is not okay. So even if they spend time below it tomorrow, that doesn't mean they have to collapse the tape, but the door gets wider and wider and wider the lower they go. The rubber band scenario takes hold, and keep this in mind. Remember, they activated the head and shoulders pattern. The price, the target price, is still a lot lower than current price. They don't have to get there tomorrow, and they don't have to get there next week or even next month, but they can. So you have to keep that in mind that the floodgates can open up, there can be a vacuum, and that's why we don't treat this as a gambling type of situation. We treat it as a business, and I don't today have a sign or signal of a trend change creating with other things a full stack scenario, which is why I wasn't willing to just go long at the close because we have some tinfoil hat event overnight that should bounce the tape. It doesn't work like that. That was a mouthful. I need a drink of water. All right, so as we wrap up the S&P 500 using the SPY, we know both sides. We're looking at 371. If they gap below it, we know something different's going on. We've got 370 underneath. And then, of course, inside the number members, I'll have refined stuff at zero dark 30 in the morning. The flip side is they run a rescue operation. They try and recapture Inside of this big breakdown candle, obviously the gap that I took away is right up there. You can see it here, and you go over here, and the closing price is 377.91. So that's going to be important also. And the closing price of this candle is 377.39. So in that neighborhood is, in fact, overhead resistance. All right, also get out your sticky notes. We're going to run through inside the numbers, but I want to point out some important things because this is the stuff that's in here each and every day, and I want you to take advantage of it if you're active in the market as a day trader, right? That's what we are. Not all of us, but some of us. They had some overnight follow-through in the southbound lane, but bounced back around the flat line by zero dark 30. What I'm citing here is yesterday they closed below 377.91. That's important because closing above or below a gap tells us information about what's next. Below is more bearish, obviously bouncing off, Maybe that was the destination, and then we take it from there. So therefore, early on this morning, that was going to be our pivot. Above, they can bounce the tape, and below, they can't. So now we had our eye on the overnight futures low, and here's where it gets interesting. Where's that? Well, you guessed it, and you already saw it. The, what I like to call them, thieves in the night did it again. The corresponding price in the SPY is none other than 373.75. So the ES futures had a run down overnight. It came to within pennies of that number. I think when I did the actual calculation, it might have come up as 373.80. We're not going to split hairs over pennies. They did the thing overnight. So we get out of that of funny how that works. On the flip side, if they bounce the tape, it will be of the DCB or dead cap bounce variety until they can at least recapture 382 for starters. We'll circle back to stocks on the move in a little while. You got the big picture. Now let's get a little more granular as the morning grows on. So the question comes up in my mind and others, 917, do they visit the 373.75 and the overnight lows or did the thieves in the night take care of business? We don't know yet, but if they start getting much below 377.50, it's going to look that way. 377 and a spike of it is also an area that can bounce the tape. 
This is information. I'm doing a little bit of a data dump from time to time, not always, but on days where there are numbers bunched up, you have to know all the numbers. Why is that? Because there are traders that want these little scalp trades. So if they know that there's two numbers, 50 cents apart, give or take, then they may be willing to buy both. Another trader is looking at this and saying, I don't really care about that. I want the lower stuff. I want to buy the 373.75 if they get there. We've got something for everybody. It's aggressive and trader's choice to buy it down there. If they bounce away, the target is 378.50, give or take. The risk is going to keep going to visit 375 and then lower, which they did. They did bounce around first, but they did visit the lower. For the record, before the opening bell, I'm a likely buyer with a spike of 374. I'm talking about the 373, 75, but we know how this works. It's a give or take. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. Just kind of setting the table, getting everybody prepared for where I'm looking to take the trade. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. You're going to see them bounce around. You'll see the numbers posted. If they get below this, they go here. If they get above this, they go here. They have to stay above on candle closes in order to get to the next place or below on candle closes to get to the next place. That's what you see. The numbers are important. You can see here 1101, 37375 is the unfinished business bouncing in front of it can be an indication that it isn't necessarily today's number, but a lower one is available. The trade from there is off the table, and I'm going to explain why that happened. Here's your five-minute chart. Right of the vertical is today's activity. Here, they came close. They bounced away. The low here was 374.29. They had a pretty decent bounce away. So if you think about it, the high was 376.57. That's over 20 S&P handles in a few minutes. That, for me, took this trade off the table where they finally came back to complete the unfinished business and had the same bounce, if not more, that I was looking for later on. And as you can see here, the high was 375.99. So again, that was another 20-plus handle pop. That's what you're expecting off these important numbers. What happened when they went to revisit it later in the day? Same routine. What's the low here? 373.72. Into the end of the day, they run them up and then they run them back down. So they kept giving the deal off that number. For me, they just didn't do it in the manner in which. And that's how I run it out as a business. I knew they could bounce off that number, but once they didn't do it in the way I like to take the trade, the trade setup I'm looking for, I know the risk just changed from... The risk being that they're going to, under normal garden variety conditions, bounce off this number using the 80-20 rule as a general rule of thumb. However, when they bounce in front of it, all of a sudden it's not the 80-20 rule in my mind anymore. I can't put a number on it. I can't say how much the percentage or the odds are now different. I can't do that because every trade is different. In my mind, when they do that, I don't want it anymore. I just leave it be, there's another trade around the corner. Once you have that concept in your mind, once you can agree with yourself on that, you'll stop, and I repeat, stop forcing trades. Did I look back and say, oh, I could have had a 20-handle trade, at least 10 on the first half or whatever? Of course I do. Everybody does that. But I look at it, I say, huh, it happened again, life of a trader. It happens, get this, every single day. It's part of the business. Read the notes. Go back to the chart to double check the work. You got the whole basis of what happened today. We had one number in mind. That was the number. If they started getting below, it was going to open the door for 371. If they bounced off of it, they bounced off of it. But then they basically just went back and forth all day long in a range. That was the number. They just didn't give me the trade and the manner in which. We had three possibles on the board today. It was rather quiet this morning, nonetheless. DRI, SQ, and UPS. We'll take a look at the charts and pick them apart. DRI, Darden Restaurants getting its haircut at the opening bell. 125 and a quarter was the number. They bounced off of it. They gave about a buck. They didn't really give the full base hit. Gave about $1.12. I suppose they did. It's close enough. But here's the deal. 
You kind of had to hustle it down the line. Anyway, you see the numbers work. They came back in later in the day, bounced off of it a couple of times. The takeaway, you got it. The numbers work. Except on Square. 5705 was the number. They came into it. They bounced around a little bit. And then they got below it, came back for the retest. Remember, we just talked about that. Put it on a sticky note. When they come back for the retest and start trading away, that's your signal. They never got to the second number. So this one, we're not calling it a disaster. We're not calling it a shit burger. They just didn't bounce at the number. But once they can't get back above that number after getting below, you know the door is open for the second number, which they didn't get to. They floundered around. They hung out for a cup of coffee all day. Don't we know that one? What's that telling us? The likely scenario is that they have another destination in mind, the lower number, the second one on the board today that never was to be. That's just the way these things work. UPS was a flounderer, so it wasn't the first number. It kind of was the second number that came up short, bounced back toward the first, fluttered around the second. Turned out it really was the second number today. They made one attempt late in the day to get back and recapture the first It just didn't happen. So technically, it was the second number that was the number of the day. No great shakes for stocks on the move today, that's for sure. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, you can see what's going on with this trend line here. After trying to recapture it, big down day yesterday after the Kabuki Theater stuff, and another follow-through day today. Where are they headed? 169.50, 169.75 in that zone. I think we mentioned it last night. You know, one might ask, hey, what's the target on the head and shoulders pattern for the IWM? About 152, give or take. And by the way, if you're down around 152, what are you going to visit? You're going to visit 150, 149, 150, 50 in that neighborhood. Why? Because those numbers are magnetic in and around the big fat round numbers. 150 is a big fat round number. Sometimes they come up short and all that stuff. You know the routine. But that's the target out of this pattern. It's not tomorrow. That's the long-term target. These things take time. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Well, they're melting down. They're at the 200-period weekly moving average we discussed already. And what did we say? May I remind you that that isn't really the same type of support that it once would have been had they came into it all the way back here when they were coming down, but they didn't. They bounced away. Now they're coming back. It's not the same type of support in that 200. So I expect them to break it. Could they bounce for a day or two, whatever? Sure, they could, but I expect them to break that price. 11,650, give or take for starters. I think we already talked about that one. About the Q people, speaking of trend lines, here's the same weekly chart. Here's the same weekly thingamajig going on. We have a weekly 200 period moving average they missed it they had a big bounce away coming back is that support now hell no and we have that same monthly candles situation going on the low here is 276.75 close the month of september below that number that's trouble in paradise again check this out same routine we just looked at on the weekly Same thing here, and this applies to all charts. We're just doing the lesson with the Q people, the 50-month moving average. Is that really the same type of support that it would have been had they came into it down here? And the answer is absolutely not. They came up short. They bounced away, coming back down. It's almost like they took a deep breath coming up short, and now they're just going to flush it through. That's kind of what it looks like. That's what it feels like. That's what it smells like. And that's going to be what's going to happen if they close below that low for the month of September. How about the XLF? All markets are being sold. It's all the same market. What's the next target? 31. Then $30.74.75. They'll fill this gap over here. It's in a downtrend. The trend is your friend and you know the rest. How about this trend line? They bounced off of it already. Coming back for a second bite at the apple. Do you want to trust this trend line? Hell no. About Smash Mouth, what's 191.90? We talked about it last night. That's the whisper number. Where are they headed? To the whisper number. What's below the whisper number? The pivot low right here, which is 189.94. Get below that. Different story altogether for a different video. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? 
Without you, these videos are not even possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.